The ends of the earth. Yeah. What's the end of the earth? You. What I think yeah. and what I do. Yeah. What I think and what I do. Yeah. Yeah. The ends of my earth are from my toes, from the crown of my head to the bottom of my feet. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Shake it out. Yeah. Why? So the day spring can get in this place. Yeah. What is this place? Hey, yeah. Yeah. Overall. Overall. All things. All things. I didn't write it. I'm just sharing. So tell me y'all look like y'all really just I'm, I'm checking out. <laughs> I did a teach a long time ago. I'm gonna go back and do it because it's been a while. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that we have not we can't negotiate. That's why I said, who which one of y'all can negotiate with me? That's what he told Joe. He said, You can't command the morning to me. You can't sit at the table and say, God, I want to give you half of this. Yeah. I want this part for you and I'm going to keep this for me. Yeah. He's going to take it. Yeah. He's going to take it. Yeah. Whatever you're holding back, Ananias and Sapphira. He's going to, Ananias, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know y'all read that story over there. Ooh, they dropped dead, why? Yeah. Because they held back. Are people going to drop dead in the church? I hope not. I hope not. I hope it doesn't happen that way. I don't know God. I'm not, I mean, I don't know God on that level. I, I, I know him on that level, but I, between me and him, I don't know. I can't. I just know he's not uh, as simple as we made him. And as soft and feminine, because we feminized him. He's a masculine man. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Amen. Okay. Can we go back over to the nice cute scripture? <laughs> First Corinthians 3. <laughs> yes, yeah, I got a couple of chuckles on that one. Let me go back over there because it got real tight as long as I stay on the other side of the cross. It's, <laughs> it's the truth. We're in a fire challenge. I'm trying to help you guys out. So when it comes to you, because it will, nobody, nobody's going to escape. I don't want you complaining to me telling me I didn't tell you. Because that's the easiest way to do it. Blame it on me. Things ain't going right in the house. I don't know what's up with the pastor. It ain't me. Why you don't blame me? I'm over here minding my business at my address. Lose a job. Say, that dog on the pastor. <laughs> so it's going to try every man's work of what sort it is. Verse 14. If any man work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Who's going to receive a reward? If your work abides, the day of his coming, the day of his appearing, the day of his inspection, he's coming to see if it's up to cold. Is it up to cold? And he's so... Man, I don't know about you, but that's his mercy. Yeah. His mercy says, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to let you wait yeah. 80 years yeah. to build something. Yeah. And at the culmination of all time and the ages of ages, you get on the other side and find out you can't come back. He yeah. said, no, I'm going to bring it in a revelation in Chronos. Yeah. I don't know about you, that, that's good. To, yeah. and we, if, if he comes and he huffs and he puffs and he blows a house, now that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 Folks say, well, I just got married. It's been a rough three years. Well, good. <laughs> good. Yeah. I hate to see you in 25 years. Say, it's rough still. Yeah. No. Do something with it. Yeah. That's his mercy. Yeah. Wow. He's trying to get your attention. Yeah. Yes. Stop looking at me. Yeah. You married us. <laughs> no. <laughs> you went out to say you what I've been saying. Yeah. I followed your orders. You came, you came to me, you said you had a date in mind, and I just said, okay. <laughs> we had our sessions, and we went through the whole motion. You did you went for forthright with some stuff and you didn't come clean. Now it's appearing in the marriage. Wow. 
15. Let's get out of here quick. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet as by fire. Fire saves us. The believer is Satan in the fire. Yes. Look, look, look. Really? Yeah. Really? You are. He didn't come to judge you. He came to think. He came to judge the things connected to you. Yeah. 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 So you can feel the flames on the door. You can feel the heat in the house. <laughs> and you can't quench it. Amen. Don't come to me and tell my apostle I need you to touch the grip. No! It's too hot. I got enough sense. Some stuff, man, you gotta greet the, the firefighter when you're leaving the house. Anyway, y'all get that next week. The Spirit of God is at work at this present time, actively kindling his fire in the hearts of many. Fire isn't a bad thing, but a positive force to remove all corruption from our lives so that only the man, Christ Jesus, will be revealed in us. For too long we've looked through a glass darkly, but now is the time, and today is the day of fire for those who desire to see him as he is. John the Baptist, a voice in the wilderness, declared a word that extends beyond the chronological fulfillment of Christ's atonement in the first century. He unashamedly trumpeted that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then you go to Acts, I think it's the second chapter, verses 38, 39. He told him, said to as many as would call upon his name, he's going to give them the same gift. Yes. Amen. So it just wasn't because of AD 70 was a judgment against that system, as my preterist brother says, but Jesus, but Peter, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, said, this is that, talking about Joel, where the Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. So if you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, right. there's a dial of fire on the inside of you. I'm the fire marshal. <laughs> And today we're just going over there and we're going to crank it up a bit. What do you say? Turn it up? But it's not there to consume you. Just like in Isaiah it says, the day of the Lord is not there to destroy, destroy you. The day of the Lord is to remove the idols. Yes, yes, yes. One of the same day, he wants the idols removed. He, he's trying to remove our security. Our security blankets and the things we built with our own hands. Yeah. It's not going to be worshipped in man's hands yeah. yes. anymore. Yes. That didn't go well either. Huh? <laughs> you can tell when I'm hitting something because you get real. You get like, like we in a morgue. He's not going to. I'm going to say it again until it agitates you. <laughs> He's not going to be worshipped or manufactured by the works of your hands. Yes. If you can carve it, if you can create it, it's not God. So many things in our lives is on life support. Especially charismatics. I see you. Intense charismatic human. I see you. Charismatic, Pentecostal folks know how to keep things alive. Come on, if we can just pray, we can just fast, we go to two conferences, we can just, I see you. Yeah. I ain't got time, I really want to go a little further, but I, I, I'll be obedient. Like my wife, she already set a precedence on Sunday, so I got to follow. The prophet go first, the apostle follow. But uh, he unashamedly trumpeted that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Matthew, the third chapter, verses 10 and 11, real quick. I got a couple of things to say, then I'm going to sit down. And now also the axe is laid upon. Unto the root of the trees. We talked about that uh, a few years ago. We talked about the axe being laid. We said the axe is what? The word of God. The gospel of the kingdom is the axe. The gospel of the kingdom. You can stay in church all you want to, but when you hear that axe coming from the gospel of the kingdom, it's a whole other angle. It's a whole other. It's not blunt. It's sharp. It's piercing. The 
dividing asunder. It didn't even just go and go. And this this axe is being laid. It's not at the trunk. It's being laid at the roots. Because if you take it off from the top, from the trunk, it has an opportunity to grow back. But if you plug it up from the roots, it won't grow back. That's when you know, as a believer, bonafide, 100% believer, there's no roots of what you used to be. Because the axe went in and took the roots up. No, no residue, no residual. That's the place we got to come to. I thank God the axe went at my roots. And every time I didn't know it, I don't care what it is, whatever tree that's in our life, I don't care what tree is in our life. It started off as an acorn. It started off small and insignificant. We sold it. I don't care what thought it is. It could be uh, um, being a macho man. Whatever thought. I'm just saying. Things we've practiced over a period of time and it's been ingrained into our uh, our our, our uh, character. It became a part of us. And it's so aching to uh, uh, church. But yet it still have it's been still operating under the spirit of defilement, but because we've allowed them to grow together, which we'll talk about next week, boy, it's gonna be real good, man. Matthew 13th, we're gonna talk about it. They gotta grow together. Woo boy! <clears throat> the axe is being laid at the root. And you can hear that thing chopping. I don't know about you sometimes. Anybody ever been asleep? And you just hear some noise to wake you up? There's a, there's a swing you can hear. I can, and even when I didn't teach them, I actually laid the roof. I can hear God at times when I minister. I can hear like s s s certain thoughts I was releasing and declaring. I can tell what's hitting the roots. Go ahead. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now that fire we've been taught, some of us been.